Hey, Nick. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm just going to cold open with this question. So Go for it. Let's say that you're like, you're going to make hot dogs. What's what's the way that you make hot dogs? I got into a fight with my roommates about this. What's the way that you make a hot dog? I'm vegetarian, so I don't make them. <laughs> no. But are you talking about technique? How would you make them? Uh, yes. Like, how would you oh, like... grill. I would grill them. Okay. 100%. Okay. Don't tell me someone boils them. Okay. Um... <laughs> Is the, it seems like we might be having audio. Is anyone having uh, audio oh. issues? Are weird things happening with audio? No sound I'm seeing in the chat. Yeah, it are looks you guys like hearing it's us okay. It's all coming through on my end. Uh, but the closed captions are coming in. That's weird. <laughs> let me know. Let me know what's happening uh, in chat. Can you guys so, hear us now? Here's here's the thing. If they can hear us, uh, okay. Here we go. Now I do have to open up our emergency Slack. All right, everyone, we're getting to emergencies. Oh. Hold on. Oh, we somebody some... somebody made a comment about dogs. So veggie maybe... dogs. Okay. Yeah, Hiller is a veggie. All right, dog. we're happening. No we can hear. Okay, cool. Welcome to office ah. hours. <laughs> yes. It's been a while since we've where, had like. Where a... did that go off? I was gonna say it's so it's bad. yeah it's been a while since we've had like a good like dumpster fire of a show, um, especially yeah. with not, us being able to not see chat in real time. So you guys are I gonna know. be like thirty. You're gonna just gonna be like, we can hear you. We can hear you. Um, all right, cool. So yes, I got into a fight with my roommates because I have always microwaved hot dogs, like just like toss them in the microwave, and they're like, "No, you're yeah. supposed to boil them." And I was like, "You put them in water," and so like supposedly they boil hot dogs. Uh, so I don't know. Th that was the hot take. I was so confused. There you go. Um, Sorry, I couldn't be a better uh, judge of kind of the technique there, but yes. I would go with grill or maybe even I guess micro over water. Let's just I, yeah, call it. I don't want hot dog water. That's gross. Perfect um, summer camp intro. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Hot dogs. And somebody said earlier that there are popsicles in the uh, in the food tent. So yeah, there's a. It's popsicle day. Yes, for everybody. <sighs> All right. Here we go. Whew. Let's. Here. Let's do this. Hold on. Uh, hold on. Let's do this, everyone. All right. Here we go. Thanks so much, and welcome back to a new hey. episode of Office Hours. Here we are. Welcome. Uh, we are, <laughs> we can cut. We can cut right from there. We could cut. We could just cut there, and then we'll start over. Um, welcome to the show, everybody. <laughs> uh, if you've never been here before, this is how the show goes. We hang out. We have fun. This is the Friday wind down. Um, we are wrapping up the week for Adobe Live. We're wrapping up the week for us personally as well. Nick, do you have more work to do, or is this it? Uh, no, this is it for yeah, me. That's Friday, right. it is over. Off to the weekend, man. That's yeah, it. Um, so this is your wind down. Chat, let us know, how was your week? What did you do? Give us one fun thing that you did this week or one positive thing that happened. Uh, Nick, positive thing, yeah. good thing that happened to you this week? Uh, had a little bit of a time off. I had tons Ooh. of projects that were all out for review, and I had like a day and a half where it was like just getting things back to order and nothing alarming happening. How about you? What was a good thing for you, man? <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it next week on our mental yes. health episode. Uh, Andrew had quite the week, so we'll talk about it next week on our mental health episode. Uh, but I am going to see Cynthia Revo tonight, so that will be a super exciting thing. Uh, way my face. Yes. So let's hop in today. What's the topic? What are we talking about? What's the flow for today, Nick? Oh, today is a good one. We're talking about personal branding, and it's quite a. Um, I think it's a controversial topic in a lot of ways because. Um, young designers, maybe people right out of school, there's always been a pressure to have like a really great logo to represent you as a brand. And more importantly, I think it's, it's not so much should you have one or not, I think it's more about what does it reflect about you? What, this is the first time probably you're ever creating a logo or an identity to represent you as a creative. What, what do you think as far as it being kind of this topic? Because I know we even talked about it a year ago with a lot of educators and a lot of them were thinking, I don't think you need a personal brand, you just need a good identity. Yep, yeah, I think it's definitely evolving and changing. And I think the biggest thing for me is that it has to be dynamic, it has to be changing, it has to be adaptable. And so as we get into here, you'll look, we'll look at a ton of examples, uh, but we're gonna talk about everything from like the look of your personal brand to like the experience of your personal brand to everything. So we're yeah. gonna try to talk about, and I think that that's important to have uh, an expectation to give people, right? That if you yes. just like come out of nowhere, then it's like, oh my goodness. But then if they have an expectation, then it's easier to manage. Uh, and yeah. we're going to talk about segmenting those because for me, there are certain things that I do that would be like completely out of left field for some audiences with a different expectation and some things that would be underwhelming with the expectation. Yeah. So I've had to segment yeah. those so that nobody gets too th thrown off. 
Um, yeah. Mark Bowden is in chat. As, Hello, is? Mark. Mark Bowden. Hey. What's up, Mark? That. I, I was going to say, too, a great way to look at personal branding or what you're doing is let's try to set a new standard to say it, it should reflect something. It should mean something. And I think as designers, we can find things to represent or reflect or have our logo and our branding kind of speak for ourselves when we're not there. Yep. And we do that with every brand and every logo we look at and decide or make a, uh, you know, it, has it persuaded you enough? Does it pull on your, your, your emotional heartstrings? Does it reinforce something? So we should be doing the same thing for ourselves as we do for the brands and the clients we get to work with. Absolutely. All right, do we wanna hop in and kind of just hit the ground running? Yeah, and, and again, guys, this is gonna be a really interactive day. We have a lot of slides that are gonna be asking questions, so get a pen and paper ready to start thinking about this. Obviously, you can always look at this and listen back and see what we're talking about if you wanna do it another time, but it's so good to have in the moment, because we'll ask you guys to maybe even come on to the Discord audio and tell us a little bit about some of your answers. Speaking of the Discord audio, Hey oh, everyone. Good segue. Yes, I want you to join our Discord right down uh, below me. You can hit, click on that link. Well, you can't click on that link, but Wade's going to drop a link for you that you can click on. Uh, and you can join our Discord. If you want to, you can go over to the Cabin Chat channel. Here, I'm going to give you guys a preview of our uh, presentation, but really just Discord. So over here, you can <laughs> scroll down and go to the Cabin Chat channel right here. That is a voice channel. Um, and so we'll have a bunch of friends hanging out in the voice channel in Cabin Chat. You can talk about the show, give your commentary in there. Um, and if you're hanging out in there, I actually may bring you on the show to do um, a little exercise at the end to help figure out your personal brand. So go hang out in Cabin Chat. And at the end of the show, once we get there, um, I'll grab one of you out uh, of chat that wants to do an exercise with us and we'll do a little yeah. uh, fun thing. Yeah, how about a quick poll? I'd love to know, yes or no, do you feel 100% confident in your personal branding right now? Ooh. I'd love to know that, because I'll say I'll say right now, even though I love what I have, it's still a no for me. I always want to oh. continue to improve. How about you? Absolutely no. I think that right? when I was doing the Hawk 2020 campaign, I would have said yes. I was so excited about that brand and representing myself with it. But I think now it's kind of fallen off and I'm like, oh yeah, I don't know, it kind of, just, it kind of exists out there. So yeah, I'm definitely a no as well. Um, yeah. And yes. Looks like the no's are coming in as are well. In, yes. <laughs> I like Elizabeth. Nope. Yes. Someone say yes and we'll fight about it. Um, all right. There it is. Oh, there we got a few of them. Let's oh, get into this. Oh, some yeses. Okay. I know. Um, so Nick, let's hop in. Yeah. You start with the definition of personal branding. That's what we're talking about today. What is personal? What personal branding? What, why personal branding? Now, this is what is personal branding on our first yes. slide. This is really a good, great, a great breakdown, guys. It's the way you speak, the way you work, the way you communicate, but most importantly, maybe even the way you design. It all adds up to create a personality that distinguishes you from others. Yep. This and establishes I, you as a personal brand, right? You, the last thing you want to do is see something else out there and be like, ooh, let me gravitate to that and launch onto that. You never want to ride coattails on this. You want it to be 100% authentically you. Yep, and this goes from everything. It's a full experience. We're going to talk about a lot of design today, but like I said earlier, the brand and the personal brand is all of the things, right? Uh, yes. There have been things even that have happened during office hours that have become part of the brand, right? Tiny hands, yeah. like who knows what that is, but because it's become it's part, part of the, of the brand. brand, right? Right yeah. now you'll see all of our promos. We're saying, hey campers, uh, because that verbiage and that language is something that's a part of the brand. Um, yeah. If we're introing a show, you'll hear Nick laughing or talking in the intro. That's part of the brand. Uh, part of my brand. <laughs> it's, it's, it's part of the brand. So it's, it's everything yeah. in the whole experience of what your personal brand is can be literally anything. Um, yeah. All right, yeah. let's look at some examples because there are some really great ones that you've pulled today, Nick. Some of our friends and also just some yeah. freaking amazing design. Yeah, I also want, let's say hi to Levi. I just saw him in the chat there and What's he just up, went Levi? through a whole new like kind of rebrand for himself as well. And um, man, if you want to, if you or Wade want to put in uh, Levi's new uh, website, go for it. Ooh. Um, great stuff to look at. I love what he did because he took it even a step further and kind of created an avatar and something really cool about himself and everything. And it creates the 
you know, you bring it up all the time, this the idea of creating a presentation, the theater of how you're going to present yourself. If you do it right, uh, it's 100% authentic. Yep. There's some other great ones. Yeah, Levi, drop, really, yeah. drop your link in chat, Levi, and Wade will make it clickable yeah. for you so we can all take a look yeah. at it. Perfect. Um, all so, right, more So examples. great ones to look at. You want to think of these as some of the folks that have are producing incredible work and they have a fantastic logo brand identity that reflects everything they're doing. One of my favorites is Carpenter Collective, run by Tad Carpenter and his wife. And they are so over the top with illustration and rich colors and vibes. What I love about what he did is he created this very simple, almost different logo that would be maybe not too expected, but it becomes this stamp, almost like seal of approval. And it's optimistic, it's fun, it has a little bit of whimsy in it, yep. just enough to kind of match you know, what he and his agency does. Yep, and I love the thing that gets me is the double L in collective, that it's that just that little nod to something fun, right? Yes. Uh, and I think mm -hmm. that personal brand is all about decisions you make. And if you're well-defined in your personal brand, then those decisions should just fall into place, right? That here it's like, oh, of course we have the double L that's like a fun thing. Of course it's like that. Because yes. it just feels right for Carpenter Collective. <clears throat> uh, you don't have to really make those choices. They kind of just fall into place if you're well enough defined. Um, yes. And I think that that Tad Carpenter piece that's down at the bottom with the arrows, um, I think if that's a poster, I think I have that from like when I was in design yeah. school oh, way yeah, back in the day. I have three or four prints that uh, I bought from him at Max and some other times that to me, they're just, you put them up, they promote this optimism. There's this great sense of like positivity. Every time you see the things that he has, uh, he does a lot of storybooks for kids and things like that too. Yep. So that comes through. And I think it's the, here's my golden rule when it comes to logos, say as much as you can with as least as you can. Yes. Like, and I think he's done that so well with this. Let the work speak for itself. This becomes like that seal of approval, that thing that's like, great, it's yep. his. Yeah, and I think Perfect. we'll talk about this later when we get into personal brands, but part of my personal brand that I actually don't have in this presentation, but one of the things that I like to do for my Hawk.co personal brand is don't speak unless you have something to say. Um, and yeah. so there's a lot of times that it's like, cool, you have to have an intentional message and be intentional in the way that you deliver it as well. And that's part of the mm -hmm. brand that it's not always being out there and being like, oh, experience my brand all the time, that it's very curated. And sometimes that's okay. You don't have to be posting work all the time. Totally. Let's look at the next one. Freaking invisible creature. Yeah. I, I When I saw this logo, I didn't even know much about them until this was years ago. And then doing a little bit more research in there. They play in the same kind of sandbox as Tad Carpenter does with a lot of illustration, a lot of work for like Target. Yep. Every time you go and see like promotions for Easter at your Target store, in most cases, Invisible Creature is one of those teams that does it. But one thing I just love about this is it doesn't even need typography. Um, one of the things I want to challenge you guys, and I think we can both agree on this, is your personal branding logo should just not be a uh, mixture of your two initials. What you want to do is dig a little bit deeper and find something that, again, <laughs> really reflects you as a person, a designer, your brand. Yep. And when I saw this, to me, it really had this like, oh my God, it's haunting, but yet it's so funny and so comical and a bit cute has all those things that kind of add up to who they are. What like what what does this kind of say to you when you uh, see something like this? Why do you like sorry, it? Sorry, I was I was laughing because when you say don't just make it two initials, at the end of the show we're gonna show some of our old yes. personal branding and that was my That's thing. Exactly it. A hundred percent. and yep. we, we all we all go through that phase. Um so for me to especially with invisible creature, they do such diverse work and you can even see the illustration styles kind of shifting between the top and the bottom, but yeah. it's about a story. There's some kind of feeling here that they have yes. just figured out how to make you feel that way in all of their work. Right. And that's, mm -hmm. that's, I think the top level of personal branding is if you can create an emotion, right? Almost like you have a decorated room that you can put whatever you want in that room, but it all still feels cohesive and it has the mm -hmm. same emotion to it. Uh, and I love the complexities and differences in their work, but it all still feels like it's telling the same story. Yes. Yes. And you have that semi Halloweeny spooky puke green that actually works in this case. Yep. I've tried to use it on so many different brands and that's exact. and I'll get this, that looks like pea, you know, like, or like, uh, you know, like the, the color of a pea. Yes. And I'm like, I love when someone can get away with this and I'm like, cheers to you because that's pretty amazing. Yep. Speaking of Halloween, uh, yes. just, this is the, this is the inside scoop announcement that I'm literally just excited because, uh, it's three months away. We've gotten renewed. There's more office hours coming to you. Uh, yay that. Uh, but more importantly, 
Halloween specials happening again, you guys. That's it. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> the, spook- spook- the spooktacular part two. Office hours spooktacular part two. Uh, all right, we have a question, Nick, um, from yeah. chat, and it is: How much should you care about personal branding as a student? Should it be important as school, especially as an art student? Student personal Ooh. branding. What's your take? I've got some hot takes, so hit me. I, I here's here's the maybe the best solution. Have a little bit of both. I would have one that la- allows you to express your creativity, have something really fun. Maybe it's part of a website or a passion project, but then have a maybe a slightly stripped down, more professional version of it that lives in your resume and maybe even your website. I- I- I'm just thinking of where you have to be, and you have to be some bit some bit of nimble there when it comes to this. Um, just make sure they're they're associated in some way. What do you say? This is my hot take. Y'all ready for, for this? It. Don't mm-hmm. make a brand until you have a brand. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Uh, that And that's the thing that I see in so many student projects and so much student personal branding is that your brand that you make is just a project and you don't have a brand. You've just made a brand that then you have to like figure out how to make yourself into. Um, yeah. Take the time to figure out what is my brand. And sometimes that doesn't happen as a student. Sometimes it happens after you've graduated and that's totally fine too. I don't think it's important sure. to have personal yeah. branding as a student. I think you grow into it eventually. Like if you don't have something to say just yet, then like what any, any, any professional will tell you, then just set your name in a beautiful, appropriate font and let that be the placeholder until you're ready. Yes, yes, I yes, love it. yes that. Perfect. Yes that, Perfect. okay. So um, our next slide, if you are doing something quite well and you're quite known for it, then make it your world. And I think Contino does a perfect job with this with, he lives and breathes his style, his vibe, everything's handcrafted, hand-drawn. I, I don't believe he's ever used like a font in his life. So you better believe his font is gonna have all of the richness and character of vintage baseball, like New York, all the things he loves and has put out there as his inspiration. And I've looked at this and tried to go like, I wish I could just do that with my name so bad. And I I love it. This is when someone, when I look at something I want and I just want to rip it off 100%, that's when I know it's amazing. I yes. won't because it's not me, but that's how good I love this Yes, stuff, and that's something you know? that I know is about to happen in chat because they're behind us is everyone's gonna be like, oh, I wish I could be like Contino. No, because it's not you. Um, and so I think that that's a big thing about personal branding too, is you look at these people who have amazing personal brands and you're like, oh man, I wish I had something like that. I wish I could do that. But it needs mm-hmm. to be like true to you, right? And we'll get we'll get into you guys can see yeah. the word keywords on the slide for some reason because I messed it up. Uh, but that's an important. It's a th- hint. Yeah, exactly. It's a hint. <laughs> it's intentional. It's a feature, not a bug. Um, yeah. That you have to figure out what your keywords are and what your brand is because even though Contino stuff is good, like it doesn't represent maybe you or what you do or your exactly. style. Exactly. It's unique totally to smart. him. Yep. It's a it it's a hand stand. It's his John Hancock, really. Yep. When you think about it, right? Oh, absolutely. Totally it. Um, and we'll through, all right, two next more up, here, guys. I'm not familiar yeah. with Kendrick Kid, so tell me a little bit about oh, his work. I probably God. should be. I know. You've probably seen his work, and uh, Kendrick's got this insane mark. I love this K he's provided to me. When I I met him at Crop, and I had a great chance to talk with him, and I said, "Tell me exactly." that this is representing the fact that you're like, a, a t- you have every tool in the toolbox. Like this idea of taking a Swiss army knife and turning it into the K was kind of like his his idea and his inspiration That's behind genius. it. And he really can. He can do this real sharp. If you notice too, he does have a real sharpness to a lot of his work. There's uh, very defined points, but then he can go and do a more softer thing or a different kind of vibe. And I think this kind of, uh, has has every tool in his toolbox kind of thing. Almost the flexibility of a Swiss Army knife is kind of what he's trying to represent here, which is really, really cool. I definitely uh, would recommend following him and seeing some of his work. Yep, and it's interesting because it's not necessarily just... Um... Oh gosh, sorry. I read a comment and I got distracted. Yeah. Uh, it's not necessarily just the logo, right? That it's uh, the weights, it's the shadows and highlights, it's the line yes. thickness that he's using. It's all these little things that then mm, makes you kind of offset. understand yeah, a little bit more of who this person is, what their brand is without having just like the logo. So hold on, actually, I'm going to go off, off script real quick. I want to pull someone up. Uh, that you guys can look at as well. His name is Tom Whalen. Uh, and he actually, his posters are literally on the wall. You guys can't see it, but they're right there. Um, and I want to show you kind of his personal brand. 
Is that his website? Nope. Hold on, wait for it. <laughs> so what he does that I think is interesting is his illustration style is his brand. So uh, here we go. Mm. So I don't think that his logo is that strong, right? Strong stuff. It's like, okay, it's type, like the little strong yeah. man. I'm like, is what is he like a circus guy? But then you look at his work and like oh, this entire page, you're like, cool, I get the brand. Everything's going to be shaded right down the middle. Uh, all the lines have these little like dots at the end of them. He's always using limited color palettes. Um, lots of lines, everything facing left. He's got like all this profile kind of stuff. Um, it's something that you see it and you're like, oh, this is the brand. So when we're saying brand, we're yeah. not talking about a logo. We're talking about a full experience of every last detail. Love it. So good. So good. All right. You're right. I think his work speaks for itself. Last one we have here, guys. Um, I'm sh and I love that you guys are loving these links. You should be bookmarking all of these things. I have a list of every agency, every designer. I bookmark everything I find. I love looking back at other people's work. This is from Brad Woodard. He runs um, Brave the Wood Studios. To me, when I got a chance to talk to him, he spoke to my class years ago. This idea of this badge just says it all. I, he is literally a living, breathing like park ranger. He is that guy. And Brave the Woods is the perfect studio name for him. And I just love that he created this great little emblem that just looks like a patch that he's the ranger of his own destiny, his own world. Everything he does has that vibe. Um, to me, this is one of my favorites because it's it's saying so much with so little. Yep, I love that. All right. Isn't that great? Yes, let's talk about All right. uh, great examples. We love those. And yes, everyone agrees, Brad is amazing. Uh, man, such a good guy. I, we like yeah. started to get into talking about it and I felt like I needed to turn Ooh. my hat back around. All right. Uh oh. I know, oh, it's right? Like, it's like, yeah, it's like over the top. Ready. All right. Let's talk about research. Let's talk about figuring out your brand. This is kind of the takeaway of like, how, yeah. do, how does your brand happen? Uh, and this is something that at the end of the show, again, we'll try to bring somebody on and kind of work through this with you to help you. So yeah. Nick, where yeah. do we start? What are the steps? How do we do this? Totally. I agree, Mark. Yes, he is the nicest dude you'll ever meet. Brad's a great dude. Um, the, here's the, here's the part to start thinking about writing stuff, stuff down and putting it in chat, letting us know if you, if you get this, if it's, if you need some help doing the research, just like you would any other job, right? Ask these questions about you as a designer, figure out how you want to be perceived. Answer that question very simply. We're going to give you our like keywords in a few minutes here and you'll see what we mean. Research your competition. That's a good thing to do. You just kind of want to see that's what you would do with any other client that you're doing. Research your audience. Don't forget. This is number one. You are not designing your website and your logo for other designers. You are doing it for potential employment and clients. Yep. You, that's your audience. Your audience is not other designers. So don't forget that. Um, develop that unique tone and voice. And this could be you just putting a list of saying, I want to be humorous. I want to be whimsical. I want to be a, maybe a tad bit more serious. I want to be formal. These are those things. Put in great words like that. And it will help you kind of start to des design and finish your research. You Absolutely. Agree? Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. On on all fronts. Um, and we've both done this. And this is where uh, I've kind of had to segment and have two different voices because I realized that yes. they don't mesh really well. And I was having trouble balancing clients between the two, the two voices. So I had to segment. So there are actually two sets. But Nick, let's talk about your keywords yeah. from your exercises of trying to figure those things out. Perfect. And this comes from two asking clients, asking people I've worked with in the past. If you do have enough history to know, maybe those people might give you better, more uh, appropriate words that match who you are as a designer. So some of the stuff I got when I asked some of my clients was very focused, very on target, meaning there were no crazy expectations, things happened as I promised them. Uh, there was an efficiency, there was a responsiveness that they really liked. Um, one, I had two really great quotes that one part, one uh, partner client said that they consider me their partner in crime and I love that idea. Uh, so that told me maybe I'm being supportive, I'm, I'm helping them along the way, being very agile and flexible. And my favorite one ever was like the first client I ever got after working six or seven years with them just said, you know, like you're our secret weapon. Like we don't, we don't, we don't refer you to other people. We don't want them to find you. And I just thought that was a perfect thing. So those, those are the keywords that I picked that kind of helped were spelled out by other folks and clients. How about you? Yeah. And I think that it's so important to ask clients and other people to get that perspective because sometimes mm -hmm. it feels like you're like fishing for compliments, but you're just like, yeah. I need help figuring this out. I had someone uh, write a review once and they said that I was a live wire standing next to a puddle. And I was like, that is the greatest thing I've ever heard. Like that is so perfect. <laughs> um, so for me, uh, I have, uh, I mean, we've talked about this a little bit uh, a couple years ago, had to kind of 
decided to shift and try to do more like personality driven stuff, do more branding, be more in the like the refined design zone. But then I also have this super weird artist side that likes to do crazy stuff and be subversive and crazy and all that stuff. So I had to segment my brand. So I have Hawk.co and Hawk.co is refreshingly authentic, immersive and adaptive and a platform for others, right? That's where we're doing nice. things like canceled con. That's where we're doing Adobe live stuff to lift up other designers. Uh, that's where we're doing the Hawk 2020 campaign. That's fully immersive and takes over social media and websites and all that stuff. Uh, and then refreshing authentic, authentic, usually the process. And when I'm presenting to clients or we're showing stuff off, I'm just like, here's the stuff, check it out. It's cool. Um, Andrew Hawkrattle, on the other hand, which is the personal brand, that's cold, bold, and old. That's stuff that's in your face, super gritty, super punchy, um, really big type. Uh, it's full of feeling, which is like, it's really emotional. And I try to evoke feelings from you, irreverent and subversive. And it also is kind of culty. Uh, every time I'm working on a project <laughs> for the like personal brand, it's always something that it like, I'm like, mm, I kind of want it to be like kind of culty. Uh, and so yeah. that's the zone is like not quite there, but like, is this okay? Like, that's the question that I want uh, out of the personal nice. work that I do. That's great. All Let's right. Let's take a look at a few examples. These yep. are like real simple, but um, build on this. Like we went a little deeper with some of the words and I hope you guys are in that zone too. But if you just wanted something, if relaxed and casual, you want it to be kind of like a no brainer to work with me or whatever it is, here's two great examples of keeping it a little casual, keeping it a little bit more relaxed. We'll talk about this too, but consistency is super key when it comes to building your brand. So here's just two really cool examples. And the next page kind of shows you what if you were supposed to be a little bit more sophisticated, a little more sleek. You want to, you wanted, this was something I had to do coming out of the toy and gift industry for so long. 90% of my work was super animated movie characters and cartoons and things like that, that I had to like change my whole perception, come off a little more sophisticated and, and professional so you can get this like you should be able to look at it and without any words describe it right like you look at all these and it's like whoa this is probably gonna be an expensive little agency yes right yes that is the thing that i love to send to oh, say to people is like Ooh, this feels expensive. Like, yeah. and even when it's just a mock-up, like you can make a mock-up and like a digital oh, thing be yes. like, Ooh, this feels like I would pay so much to have this. Uh, even though it's just like, Oh yeah, it's just like a JPEG. Um, yeah. but I think that that's something that like, to me is the most accessible thought when I think about personal branding is like, Ooh, it feels expensive. Um, yeah. So oh, we got a great little typo there with examples. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you for it? catching that, Barbara. <laughs> examples. Um, some examples. <laughs> Uh, so these are some examples. And again, we wanted to talk about not just necessarily the visuals and the stationary, right. That we're seeing here oh, about I experience, right. People that don't necessarily have the design personal brand, but have the personal brand. So on the left is my favorite artist. Probably his name is Jesse Draxler. Um, and Jesse Draxler is like literally the, this is the greatest that there's ever been. Um, and so you can tell it is all super aggressive in your face, gritty, crazy, um, and that's kind of represented everything on Instagram, everything on stories, everything on the website has that voice. Um, one that I think is one of the greatest brands in experience is Stevo, right? Like he has his logo, but it's like Helvetica with like a treatment on it. And so that doesn't yep. give you any kind of personal brand, but man, everything he does, every promotion he does, every movie he does, every YouTube brand that he does, uh, everything is on brand for Stevo, and you just know it's Stevo. and Nick, your favorite person in the whole universe, uh, Chris Angel, Chris Angel. <laughs> I, I was thinking of like, who has a brand that when I think about them, I own, I know exactly who they are and what they will do and what I'm going to experience. And Chris Angel has established an amazing brand that you hear his name and you're just like mind freak, right? That it's, that's branding. Yeah. And it's an amazing personal brand to get there. Um, yeah. I love that Nick gives like actual examples. I'm like, all right, let's talk about Chris Angel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, continue it's, on. It is a, it's worth saying, and I think there's. I'm glad you you kind of went off on the tangent on that because yep. you're right. It could be just. I think Steve O's a perfect example. I don't think he technically has a logo or anything I've ever seen of his, but he, he's doing it by living it, and probably ten times more authentic than I, uh, the other example on that page. Maybe, yes, I'll say doing it by living That's a hot it. Take. And, uh, yeah. So James White, uh, if you guys aren't familiar, James White, Signal Noise 
the yeah. best designer who's ever lived and the greatest artist <laughs> to walk the face of the earth. Uh, he's just the greatest guy. And I have always, yeah, I loved his work. Anyway, uh, he, way back in the day when I was going to design school, he was talking a lot about living your this brand. Right uh, right, oh, yeah. Oh, I have I have that same poster right the down over there. Poster. Yeah. The twinsies. Uh, that's how Nick and I want. bonded at the beginning. I was like, is that a drive poster? <laughs> um, James White has talked a, a lot about living your brand, right? And you see his work and it's neon and chrome and just like pink and blue and gorgeous. And then you see him and it's like denim jackets and patches and he's got the studs and he's got the synth wave blasting in the background. And he just lives that brand. And so it is an extension of who you are. Your personal brand is an extension of who you are. Don't try to make it anything else. Um, yeah. So as you're discovering that, not creating that, I'm going to say that again, you discover your personal brand. You don't create it. There are some questions to ask. Nick, questions. What is the main thing I am offering to a consumer or an employee or employer? So think about it. what is the main thing you are offering? Are you the most incredible hand letterer? Are you a motions graphics person? Just start. You're starting to define. This is maybe the first steps you would take. What is something unique that you have that somebody else doesn't? We've just experienced experienced and shown you guys a ton of people that are doing something in their own lane. And if you're not quite there yet, at least you can kind of think maybe there's something really great. I just saw, I think Nick was in chat saying he gets driven a lot when it comes to how he's described as a person. So if that's one thing you can offer that no one else maybe does at the moment, driven could be your, your thing, you know, look at your strengths. And then do you have maybe that distinct style or is there one particular area of of creativity you're just mastering right now, right? Yep. I've seen a lot of young designers being really great at the hand lettering or the illustration skills already before they've even hit the job market. So if you're that good at that certain point, there's your target. Yep, and it doesn't have to be a discipline. So I was thinking exactly. through this as, as Nick asked it, it can be something that's broad. And so when I'm thinking about what I'm offering to consumers with Hawk.co, I'm offering uh, expertise and personality and then with Andrew Hockrottle, personal stuff, I'm offering perspective. And so those go. are very broad concepts, but mm. that is the sale is, hey, if you want me to do some crazy personal work, I'm going to bring a perspective to this project that others couldn't or wouldn't because yeah. I have a unique perspective. If you want, you know, this for another project for Hawk.co, great. I'm going to bring a personality to it that you've never had before, right? We're going to give you yes. the entertainment. We're going to give you just that. And those are the cells. And so defining those cells, I think, is so, so important. What's oh, your totally. thing, Nick? When it comes to main thing I offer, yeah, I'm now putting in um, the trustworthy experience. Like you could trust my Ooh, my that's opinion, good. right? Because like I think at a certain point we all struggle with that. Like why aren't you listening to me? What what did where did I miss the mark and not? showing you that I'm a professional in this field. So yep. like it's the trusted experience and feeling you have the track record to, to go off of it. Yep. You know? All right. Continue but trust on. is a big one. Yes. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. So I did this experiment with my class when I built my last logo. And I think this is a really simple way to break it down. Let's go to this process slide. This is kind of cool. So this idea is a very elementary way to start thinking about now that you all have some of these key words, you want to go and just, I'm using the nounproject.com here as a great example. I'm sure you've all bookmarked this place. Great spot to go for um, free little icons and emblems that you can use in like infographics and stuff like that. But for me, I just wanted thought starters to represent trust, efficiency, whimsical, detailed, flexible. And by just searching on there, I'm getting an idea of what an icon looks like for flexibility, what an icon looks like for efficiency. Now I'm not, stealing from these. I'm just getting an idea of what those look like. Cause my challenge was, like I said at the beginning, let's not think of just initials here. I don't want to just get an N and an L and you'll see in a few slides. That's what I did back in the day. I, I did not, I just wanted to find a great way that letters would nestle together. That doesn't mean anything. Let's, let's find something that means it, get your keywords and start thinking about what things represent those words. It's that simple, right? Yep, absolutely. Uh, and something interesting is happening in chat that like, yeah, maybe I have an opinion on, but maybe not. Uh, go for it. Gareth. Okay. Hold on. Let me catch up here. Gareth said something. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually just going to respond to Stephen Booth's comment. So he said, I suck at anything art related, but my old stuff, uh, but I put my stuff out there, try it. If I can get away with it, I'm sure you can. Uh, I think that like in a zone that is okay for a personal brand. I think be careful because if you don't want to be saying art, 
then don't say art, right? So if if your yes. brand is not like, oh, my brand's all about art, don't put stuff in there that doesn't represent your brand, right? It, it's great to experiment and do personal projects and kind of figure that out. But if it doesn't represent your brand, then don't put it out there under your brand, right? We talk a lot about the importance of personal projects, which we'll actually talk about in two weeks. Um, but you really have to curate what's between your brand and personal projects and things you love versus what you want to present as your brand. Yep. Um, perfect. All right. Continuing on, Nick. Yeah. Let's so go. Here's, here's a perfect example of this is right out of Draplin's book. I love this process in showing what you now do. You've did keywords. You have some ideas of what you could possibly start using for, as building blocks for your personal brand or your logo. And what he had here were like stripes, this cap, the stars, maybe there was, he was going to use a C in there. He wanted to have an A in there. So you can see the beginning stages of just sketch, refine and explore, and then go to town when it comes to vector. And that's just one half. He has like a two page spread of how many vectors it took to get to that final one. And again, it says the most with saying the least. He, you could see all those other ones and the tries, but look at that final one at the bottom, right? Like there's something, it sums it all up and it says it with the least amount of, you know, complexity and nothing added that's not needed there. Yep. And I just love this as a perfect example. Oh yeah, I think Droplin has a lot of really great examples and I think he has a class that actually walks through that, right? Yes, correct, yep. exactly. So, so what he's what he's trying to do is create this adaptive system, right? Yep, That's yeah, kind totally. That's what we're, we're trying to do. Yeah, and we talk, right, we've talked a lot already that I'm like, your personal brand's not your logo. I don't really care about your logo. Uh, I think, mm -hmm. well, that's my hot take. We've talked about that before, that Andrew thinks that logos are going out in the next five years. But I think <laughs> I think that you shouldn't focus on just your logo. It's about uh, a full experience, and it's super helpful to address your personal branding when it comes to a visual means to create yes. it as an adaptive system because it's your thing, and you don't want to be locked in as you grow and you change in your journey and maybe you take on different work, maybe you start doing other stuff, you need to be able to adapt and change your personal That's brand true. to fit that so you're not having to rebrand yourself like a million times. Uh, and yeah. Nick, this is your personal brand. Talk to us about it. Yeah, so I, I wanted to show you how I took that kind of same formula and came up with an icon or a, oh, a, a, sorry. a image mark. Can yeah. I stop you for just a second? So, sorry, Elizabeth Mock said something great. She said, no more logos. Now it's just company names. Yes, yeah. except now it's just company experiences. That's the shift. That's, That's the shift that I try That's to talk where... about is like, it's not yeah. about their logo. It's about how you experience that company. And that's why it's just type with their name because they don't care about that. They want you to yeah. adapt the values of the company, not just the logo. Yeah. And to me, it was like, not only that, but it was like, how do we still put a, a touch of personality in it? This is the most simple and like, like subtle logo I've ever used for a long time. Like, yep. honestly, and where I got it, I wanted to represent something. And when I looked at my words and the images I found, I found supportive, kind of the wings, that idea of like something kind of supporting you, kind of like lifting you. The on target kind of thing was me being kind of responsive and on point. The agile thing, I could, there's movement there. The efficiency kind of show like kind of speed and things like that. But then I love that idea of even like secret weapon and something that would be almost how do I represent now? I'm not obviously finding one element of each one in here, but to me, if you put these all in like a blender and then stripped it down, that's what I was trying to do. And I'm a huge car fanatic. So to me, when I was at that point of kind of replicating something, I loved old like car ornaments from like the vintage stages. And I love this idea that they all had this like kind of wind and movement and they were like gazelles going through the wind. And that was the inspiration I really kind of loved and putting mine together and it's been for me kind of my most successful and most versatile one because it reflects core things so even if things change these are the things that won't change for me yep so that's where i kind of drew the line on where and then i love the fact that it can now play into my last name if i use, need to use it with the full name or if i just need to use it on its own yep totally uh and yeah. steven booth yes it was intended more of encouragement totally totally got that sorry i didn't mean to like come for you on that i was just like oh there's yeah. a point to be made here um <laughs> 
And Nick, I love, and this is kind of a preview, wink, wink, to something that's coming in a future season of Office Hours that you guys actually won't hear about for a while. But I love that you've taken that rule of like, don't use your logo as a letter in whatever the logo type is, and you just blow it out of the water. You're like, no, it fits. It totally works. Yeah. And it feels on brand for you to incorporate that in there and somehow makes it more trustworthy, right? Because you've taken the totally. kind of like luxury and classicness of all of these inspirations and putting it into the name makes it feel more luxurious more classy more timeless yeah uh, i love that yeah. thank you and then there's also cases of using a font that's a little more modern so i don't go too far into something that could resemble old old-fashioned maybe not modern so again it's these questions um i love sharing these kind of things with other designers and friends that i know before i do anything because we could not we could be not aware of something so easily until someone brings it up. Yep, absolutely. You know, let's move into yours, So bro. yeah, talking about adaptive systems. So uh, because I knew that I liked to do a lot of broad campaigns, right? We had the Hawk 2020 campaign. I have another one coming up probably in April. Uh, we've done canceled con, that kind of stuff. I like to be agile. I like to tell stories. And like I said, the hawk.co is very immersive. And so when I started out making the logo for personal brand, I knew that I wanted to be able to scale to a million things. Uh, and so we started out with just the hawk.co. And from there, I've built the system that allows me to use not only the name, but also the yeah. URL. So we have hawk.co, I have uh, hawk.host, we have the hawk2020 campaign, hohohawk.co is my favorite domain that I own. That was my Christmas campaign, uh, <laughs> dot shop, dot live, dot school, dot help. Um, and this continually expands. So dot gallery is coming next year. Um, dot fail is probably coming a little bit later this year. I have dot triple X that I'll do something with eventually, uh, which will be really fun. Uh, cause again, I like to shake things up a little bit. So that'll be the mix between, uh, the, the two worlds of being a little subversive and uh, refined. So this is something Perfect. that just shows when you're working on something, I need to be able to adapt. And regardless of what I'm doing, right? If I'm teaching a class, I can link them to hawk.school. And then that way you can adapt and change it. And I'm not having to rebrand myself every time that it's like, I'm a teacher now, here's my teacher brand. Oh, I'm doing hosting, here's my hosting brand. Uh, it is all just the same thing. Uh, and yes, well, Elizabeth- I think one Ma of your words should be super flexible because like you said, you are thinking of applications down the road, future proofing yourself. And that's what the Hawk exclamation point does. Yes, absolutely. Perfect. Yep. Uh, and yes, Elizabeth says Hawk.fail. Yes, Hawk.fail is going to be all of my worst work in a portfolio. <laughs> Uh, and so this is, uh, like I said, being able to adapt to something is we created the Hawk 2020 campaign, uh, which again was the Hawk dot 2020 and it actually got hacked. Like it legit got put behind a paywall, legit got hacked by, it looks like Russian hackers. Uh, they took the site down. I had to go through all this stuff. And then I was like, oh, cool. Since that happened, it would be really fun to run a smear campaign against myself. Right. And again, because my brand value is immersive, it was everything from posting on social media to take over to new profile pictures to completely redoing the site from scratch to have this new look but again it's just being agile and subversive and being able to say hey here's what the brand is how can we flip it to keep it on brand but make it new right scalable and yeah. adaptive uh, all right so let's talk about the steps yeah so you created a logo you want to create maybe your font palette you want to create that color palette keep your design consistent you saw everything in Andrew's pages that as much as it gets different and changes and whatever, there's still a consistent flow throughout everything. And some good examples, just to show you what we're talking about on the next few pages, have these things that show that you can maintain a specific tone through everything. The one here on the left is really, really great. It has this master of karate and friendship, like great little kind of one liners that are humor. They show his, his humor when it comes to like how it's going to be to work with this person. Notice like everything in just a black and white has a very consistent and specific tone. Yep. The one on the right does the same thing. Just with two bright, vivid colors, you're getting all the feels with it. Like knowing exactly what you're gonna expect without reading a single word. I love when just color alone can do that. You oh, know? absolutely. Love the future does that with their blue and yellow. Like you just, yes. it just feels right. Um, Almost they vibrate against each other. And yep. That's really cool. Totally. Yep. 
All right, go ahead with this one. I'm going to cough. Yeah, and guys, a lot of you struggle with having two things that you can't figure out one or the other. Here's a great way to blend two ideas. This person is both illustrative and graphic, and they found this great way to have a very graphic-oriented badge, but then this stroke of like a paint stroke in the back that becomes almost a second logo in a way that like shows that there's an organic and a raw side to. They could live on the same identity, and I think this one to me is one of those real successful ones because we all struggle with like maybe finding the one thing that we could do. Yep, absolutely. You know? uh, Elizabeth Mock, the opposite of love is not hate, but indifference. I don't remember who said that. Uh, that's from a Taylor Swift song. That is from, I forgot that you existed. Uh, all right. <laughs> Let's be as specific and know everything. I know, it's I like, it. this is a quote. And it's like, that's a Taylor Swift song. Uh, yeah. Things to consider, develop a tailored font and color palette. Yes, oh. having hierarchy is like, that is your voice, right? It's the character that you are. It's how people read your voice in your head, um, right? They're reading something and it should feel like it's you talking to them. Uh, and you can do that through oh, color, right. but doing it through type is like you can literally craft how they imagine you to be. Uh, have you ever had anyone that like you saw their type or saw their branding and then you met them in person and you're like, oh, your voice is so different than what it was in my head. Oh, every time. Almost. That happens a lot. I think because you might find something you really like, but did you really go through the process of matching it to you? Yep. And I think that's, and that's somewhere where I, I'll fully admit, maybe it doesn't, it doesn't reflect me personally, but it reflects me as more as the, the client, what I want the client to think. So there, there still could be a disconnect for me in a lot of those ways. I'll be totally honest. Yep, yeah, I totally agree. Um, this is, this is great too. Just this is something you do a ton of, system. I do a ton of these too. We do this for our clients, guys. Yep. Do it for yourself. Have a nice page with all of your branding, all your colors, all your typography. Great idea to add tones, textures, patterns to your brand as well. Have these on the ready so you can create assets super fast, particularly in graph, um, social media, you name it. Yep. And super hack to like one, charge your clients more and two, make them think that you're just the greatest thing ever. Do a brand standards manual, right? That's like, you got a 10 page manual. It's got a logo. You got colors, you got type hierarchy, and then also give them a one sheet. That's a quick reference. Uh, and yes. just have logos, have colors, have like everything they need to quick reference. They go wild for that. They go so yeah, crazy every great, time yeah. when I'm like, I've condensed it also down to one page that you can use a quick reference. They're like, Oh, it's the best thing ever. Stop. You're killing me. Right. They love it. <laughs> Next um, up. All right. Networking. This is, the this is the summary. Yes. So you've done all this. Now, what do you do with it? Right. You've created that style guide. Get on and set up all your uh, social media profiles, create all your digital deliverables, the stuff that Andrew was just saying too. Do you have a pricing list? Do you have that one pager? Um, you name it. You want consistency. You want to make sure everything you've done now really, really works as a system. And again, it goes back to all the stuff we were showing you at the beginning. Now you become recognizable and, and discoverable based on being, oh, I've seen that before. I know that brand. Yes. I, I've seen Hawk. I know what that is. And that, that strength comes from you putting it out there all consistently based on what you've just created. Yep. And it's all about intentionality and all about kind of leading someone to a place and being so intentional. We talked about the storytelling, holding their hand to get to a certain place. I remember when I launched uh, as Hawk.co being my personal brand and launching my own business as just Hawk LLC. I remember somebody was like, oh, you should have spelled it differently. Like no one's ever going to know how to pronounce that. And, yeah. and I literally tweeted back and I was like, oh, they will. Uh, because I was so determined that I was like, my brand is going to be specific. Yeah. It's going to be intentional. They're going to be hearing that name. I'm going to be saying it. We're going to be putting it in stuff that they will become familiar. And that yeah. was like a challenge to me of like, okay, there is a hurdle here. How do we intentionally address this problem to make sure that the brand still goes through and still kind of fluctuates to where it needs to go? Totally. All right. Yeah. We got about seven minutes ready? left. Let's get into. We promised this. The archives. Oh, Guys, Nick, fasten your seatbelts. Can, oh can you just God. tell us a little history about where you've come from and kind of maybe some context as to what we're about to see? Yeah, I think this is about me finding ways to, even before I was my own design studio and I was still currently employed, you always playing around with maybe a logo design here or there, what you did right out of school. Um, then when you're trying to establish yourself as an independent designer, you try just about everything. And I did, and this is what I'm about to show you some of the, some of the best, some of the worst things like I learned from all of these, but oh my God, top left in the uh, business card on the wood grain was probably the first business card. And I think I even printed that on a letterpress. What the heck was I doing? What did I think? What was I? 
the, the, I trying to the do? middle one I and like Nick Longo graphics. Yeah, this is just going to be the roast of Nick Longo. Um, this is the best. The the um, middle one makes it look like you're like an interior designer or you sell like flooring. Yes, <laughs> and that had a really interesting story behind it. I just did not capture it well. There was so much meaning behind that and. I was in that stage of, again, trying to be more serious because everything I was doing was much more animated, much more fun. So I was like, I have to look like an architectural firm. That's yep. really what I was kind of going through here. Um, the one on the bottom right was one that I was, first time I was trying to have a voice and do something different. And my tagline was, let's make extraordinary happen. I was thinking, that's what I was trying to do with every client. Um, then that middle bottom one was me trying to be a little bit more retro and like, Old fashioned. Uh, then that one um, where it says partner and it's got the card kind of length uh, portrait. I went ahead and just put every capability I'm you can hire me for on one card. And when that first came back from the printer, I was like, um, you can't read anything on here. It's so this is damn insane. Small. Yes. Uh, I love that. <laughs> and this is like maybe a roast and maybe a hot take, but I don't mean it Go like that. It. But the, the, the middle one that's like the longo that's like all like flourishing or whatever. In my brain, that is like who you think that you would want to be in a logo. Yes. That like a lot of your work has that vibe and like ha definitely like has that style in a lot of stuff. And it's obviously something you're very comfortable in. And I feel like you like working in that style, but it doesn't represent you as a person or as a creative. And so no. it definitely like knowing you and being familiar with your work, I'm like, oh, I totally see where that came from is like, oh, yes. this is who I want to be. And this is a designer that I'm going to become. And then you're like, oh no, I'm doing other stuff now. And I'm doing like robotic dogs. And now like logo doesn't apply to that. Yeah. And again, it goes back to what I was saying, where you're trying to, I think in a lot of these, you're just in trying to impress your designer friends. You're not thinking about who's going to pay you, who's going to employ you. Yep. So that's where I think the evolution of this really kind of stemmed from. And I'm, I'm more than happy where I'm at now, but I love the fact that you're, there's always room for improvement. Yep, All absolutely. right. Are we ready? All right. Drum uh, roll. We're going to go. Give us a little, wait, before we go to yours, give us a little, give us your background on what we're going to see from yours. Okay. So I, I had been doing design since high school and I thought that I was a big deal. Like the entire time, uh, I was like, Oh, I'm so good. I like have a studio. And so I, I love signal noise, James White. And so I was like, I need to have a moniker. And so my moniker was pulse proj. And I don't know why I like, I don't even remember what the story was, but it was like pulse project of like, we're coming alive and having energy. And then it like got shortened oh. to Pulse Proj. And I was all about like grunge. And I'm still, I, I've just refined it a bit to be a little bit older, but I was all about grunge. Uh, and this is where I was. So I literally was like, watercolor splatter paint brushes. And this was like my brand. Like I would use this on things, like everything. Um, I had like a set of, you know, brushes from go media or whatever. Um, and then I went through the phases of my graduating portfolio, uh, site is I had the A and the H right. The overlay that everybody yeah. tries to do the two letters. Um, I was really into like this blue zone. Everything was CMYK. And so I had nice. like yellow and magenta were like my quotes that I would send off. And so I stayed in CMYK. Cause I was like, Ooh, designers love CMYK. Um, and then I thought I was going to be a photographer. I like want to do print design. I didn't know what I was. I was just like, I don't know. Like I'm all these things. And also I'm totally crazy. Um, <laughs> I thought that I was like, I had this persona of like, oh, I'm going to be like the cool kid. That's like the like rebellious designer. Uh, and I know ever. Yes, I know. It's a whole thing. Um, and then I evolved into this more refined grungy style that is kind of where I am with personal brand here, but I've refined it yes. to be this like really crazy zone of like, it's a gift that kind of just goes through a bunch of different versions of my name like this. Uh, and so it's eventually evolved to a place with personal brand that I like. And again, Hawk.co has very much cleaned up and become an expansive system, but man, it was, it was a hot mess there for a little while. Yeah. I like that you can see you always had an experimental kind of like let's just try and see if it and, and, and see if it's there. Like you you definitely I think pushed the limits with a lot of the stuff you were doing even back in the day. And on the flip side, I always felt the refinement and the the the, the need to be more sophisticated. And it's so funny how that's just such a weird kind of way that you fall into these things. And I think showing this I hope it's helping you guys understand that you will go through the process. You won't get it right the yes. first time. And, yes. you know, but if you can speed that up a little bit, 
and, and you know, more power to you. Yep. That's, that's what we're here for. Absolutely. So we've got a minute left. Um, we definitely want you guys to join the discord, drop your personal brands in there. Maybe we'll do some more review next week, but next week we're talking about mental health. Uh, it's going to be probably my favorite episode, maybe that we've ever done. Uh, we have a clinical psychologist coming on to give us advice. Uh, yes, an actual doctor, uh, which is going to be super fun, a little guest spot. And speaking of guest spots, Nick, August 20th, let's just make the announcement. Now we have a very special guest who's coming on the show on August 20th. Oh, let's see. They are twins. They are from Orange County. Um, they make fonts. Yes, that's right. Hoodspa Design is coming on the show, guys. We are getting Hoodspa Design on the show August 20th. So mark your calendars. They will be coming to talk all about business with us. We'll be doing a Q&A, talking about business and hanging out. Uh, some of the first guests I think that we've had on the show is like an interview. Um, so that yeah. will be super fun. And we also can confirm with 30 seconds left before we get cut off. Office Hours merch is coming, y'all. That's all we're going to say. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye. Later, y'all.